In today's video, we're going to be looking at all the adaptations of the alveolus for gas exchange and the roles of type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. First of all, we have a large surface area to volume ratio. We have a good capillarization, so lots of blood capillaries. A short diffusion distance, meaning that gases only have to transfer a very short distance before they enter the blood. And the alveoli are moist to allow gases to dissolve. Looking in greater detail now at the cells which make up the alveoli, first of all you have type 1 pneumocytes and then secondly you have type 2. So the thing to notice with type 1 pneumocytes is that they're very thin and they're also permeable, which means they're super adapted to carry out gas exchange. And notice that the walls of the alveoli contain only a single layer of these type 1 pneumocytes meaning that there's a very short diffusion distance. Next up, type 2 pneumocytes. The type 2 pneumocytes, we're really looking at the fact that they moisten, so effectively they secrete a fluid which keeps the inner surface of the alveolus moist. And crucially, that's needed to allow gases to dissolve. One thing to be aware of, that fluid contains a substance known as a surfactant. Now a surfactant is effectively a natural detergent, something like the body's equivalent to fairy liquid, and effectively that stops the sides of the alveoli sticking together, keeping them nice and separate. The last thing we need to mention to do with the gas exchange and the alveoli, we need to look at blood capillaries. And so if you look at this diagram, the grapevine structure is the alveoli, and then surrounding the grapevine structure is this network of blood capillaries. So deoxygenated blood, which has come from the heart, will obviously be high in carbon dioxide, low in oxygen. Carbon dioxide will leave the blood capillary by diffusion, and oxygen will enter the blood capillary also by diffusion so that it can then be transported to the heart. <laughs> 